Okay, here's a practical example that will maybe illustrate what I'm talking about. Uh, let's say, for instance, uh, you have a small unit uh, out in the field and you get a report that there is an enemy unit, uh, say an artillery unit, at such and such coordinates. Now, you know where you are on the map and uh, you can tell by using the UTM grid where this enemy unit is located. Now, the, the, the problem is here, if you want to send a recon unit over there to check them out, what bearing or azimuth do you use and how do you get there? How do you arrive at that reading? Now, um, camera guy, if you want to come on in here a little closer, I'm going to show you uh, two ways to, to do this. Let's start out and say, okay, um, our position is here at the X. We have figured out that this enemy unit is up in this grid square at these coordinates. Our mission is to go from our location here up to this enemy unit and check it out. All right, we've got our military issue lens attic compass. Um, the, way I understand, um, the way I understand it's done, this could, this could be subject to correction, is that the angle from the uh, base camp to the enemy unit would be measured with a straight angle, either a string, some units use a string or whatever, so in this case it would be about 45 degrees. Um, so that is a grid angle. In order to get over there with the lensatic compass, declination is going to have to be taken into account. In this area it's about four and a half, 14 and a half degrees east declination. So from the map, from the map to the field, that declination would be added or subtracted. I can't remember which, but those of you who deal with these compasses will know what I mean. You have to do mental calculations to get to a magnetic, a corresponding magnetic azimuth that you can use to find that enemy unit. You're going to give your squad a, uh, an azimuth that has been translated from a UTM or MGR, M MGRS, uh, Military Grid Reference System, reading to a magnetic reading which they'll use on their issue lensatic compass. Now, so um, you've seen that, how that's um, arrived at with the issue compass. With the uh, protractor compass, which is the one we use out in the field here, this is a Finnish model. It's called the MC2. It has a global needle. It has an inclinometer for measuring the angle of a slope. That's good for avalanche work. Got a mirror on it. Anyway, the important thing is that this is already um, this is already adjusted for the 14 and a half degree east declination. So uh, all we have to do to figure out how to get from base camp to the enemy location, this little lake, is put the compass on that line of travel, line it up, line up the red markings in the bezel with your UTM grid pick it up and go. That's it. That's all there is to it. Declination is already taken care of. You've translated the, um, the map uh, bearing. Uh, you have, haven't even had to translate it, in this case, with the lensatic compass you did with this uh, compass. Uh, you didn't because it's already synced with the, with the grid system. So what I'm, my point here is that uh, we can... We can back uh, and my point here is that um, the, the accuracy that this compass generates is about two degrees. And for most small unit um, movements and operations, two degrees is fine. I mean, we have had no problem. This area here is about maybe eight to ten acres. We found it after traveling several miles over snowy country without any trails or anything like that. Never had, had a problem. The way we fine-tuned our navigation the other day 
was to take readings on peaks like like this one over here on the skyline, do intersections, either intersections with other uh, landmarks <clears throat> or with the contour lines as, as dictated by the uh, altimeter watch. So anyway, this is um, throwing this out for discussion and perhaps uh, we can have some workshops uh, in some of the field units to see if it's applicable.